What's up, everybody? We are live. Uh, if you are watching this after the live stream, uh, w when this video is uploaded, I people asked if I could like cut down the beginning where like nothing happens until people join. That's something I was totally down to do. I did that, but then I realized if you want YouTube to store the comments from the live stream so that people can read along with the comments as if it was still live, that gets turned off automatically if you cut out this part. So instead, I just hit record and, or hit go and uh, started talking at you. Uh, I suppose I should scroll down and see, hey, people have already joined. What's up, Troy? What's up, guys? Fantastic. All right, I'm gonna click this button. And uh, we should be good to go. I'm really excited for this one. I've been waiting for months to do this live stream. Because every time everything showed up in the mail, I bought something else. <laughs> A problem many of us have. Hello, Philip K. Uh, I will say throughout this live stream, lots of people's YouTube names don't match their names elsewhere, so I might struggle a bit. Uh, and this won't work without questions from you lovely viewers, so let me know what you're interested in seeing. Got all my little, uh, thanks man, appreciate it. This watch band uh, was created by uh, Combat Straps, which is like a subdivision of Aaron Bespoke, which is a leather company, um, or like a leather works company, I guess you would call it. Uh, they do like watch straps and valet trays and um, like the little watch carrying cases that are leather. Uh, and I, they probably do like other stuff too. I would imagine they would do belts and stuff, but I, ha I haven't particularly seen that. Um, but he does tons of custom... Um, straps in all kinds of different materials and when i was actually ordering this uh custom clasp the person that i was ordering it from uh, that's an sn metalwork clasp made of carbo quartz and timascus and uh when i was having that made i just wanted to have them i didn't want to like keep spending money so i just wanted to have them put it on the band that i already had but the measurements were not correct because the class was already made because i didn't want to wait so uh, I was like, all right, I guess he's in like cahoots with um, combat straps because he was like, I have a guy. And then like I paid for it through SN Metalwork, but he like ordered it. And like he took my order of like what I wanted, but then he sent the order out to combat straps and uh, and he made it. Uh, so, yes, I love it. This is ostrich skin and uh, it's fucking dope. Let's see, uh, Ocean says, send me a slug. Dude, you can't have one. What do you need a slug for? You don't even have a, you don't even have a, a spinner to put it in, man. This is my least favorite slug. This is from the poker one. I just wish it didn't have a damn skull on the fucking spade. Charlie says, what the hell are those? Uh, what the hell are what? I mean, I know that you know what lighters and watches and flashlights are. So what the hell is what? How's the hand? Oh, man. I, It's like I'm so thankful that like people care and I, I'm, I appreciate it. But like, man, every time people bring it up, it like reminds me that it's like a thing because I've gotten so used to it now. Um, it's got permanent damage. Like it's... Um, so it's like numb in between here, but it's like not even numb. It's more like it's asleep. So like doing this is like shooting like kind of painful like needle tingles all through the fingers. Um, and then like down here where the nerve is damaged, um, like direct pressure like this is fine if my hands all spread out. But then like poking it and stuff is not great. And if something sharp like a knife pokes right here, like it is painful uh buying up lighters and patches says troy um yeah it's kind of like a problem 
I don't really use, so uh, I picked this lighter up recently on uh, Urban EDC. And uh, it's pretty cool, made in Japan. I like the little lid. Then if you strike it, it's all one motion. Um, so that's pretty neat, but it's like not particularly special. Uh, I just kind of like got it as an impulse buy. Uh, this is a Colibri. Um, I don't know what year it's from. I think the 70s. Uh, it's a side strike, and it's uh, it never worked. I bought it for a pretty low price, and when I got it, it just didn't function. So if you fill it with gas, it does it – does, so it strikes, obviously. Um, and if you fill it with gas, it's just that the regulator's broken. So – uh, you get a flame, but it's like f four inches long, and there's no way to control it. So uh, I considered getting it repaired, but honestly, uh, I didn't really like it that much when I got it. I don't really like the way it opens and closes. It just doesn't have a great feel. So I just keep this one for, like, the EDC photos because uh, it looks fucking fantastic. And it really wasn't that expensive. Um, this is an ST DuPont. I got turned on to this by uh, my friend Winger. You guys know him, HK Winger on... Uh, Instagram and YouTube. Uh, he got me into this crap. I don't really like know too much about it. This one's from the 70s. Uh, I do like this little emblem. I don't know if it's like personalized or what, but there's like a little Pegasus on there or something. I always thought that was dope because a lot of them have initials. Like this one was personalized for, I got it from the original owner. I guess he said his dad bought it for his mom for a birthday present. And like, I guess this is her birthday or like commemorating the birthday when she got it and then these are her initials so that kind of sucks um but i do like that this one doesn't have initials it's like a it's like a cool pegasus emblem this uh this one works it's just really low on fuel right now i need to refill it the regulator's kind of fucked up on it sometimes it likes to spew flames but you know most of the time it works for my purposes and i really like this one too this is uh sterling silver plated I've got, like, um, a jeweler's cloth and stuff to keep it spick and span. I've got some uh, ST DuPont fonts for it and everything. Uh, I really want to um, get a Dunhill. That's, like, the next on my list. I, I've been bidding on some uh, eBay runs. And I've, I just the ones that, you know, I like, but I didn't know if they work or whatever. They got too high. And then some of the ones that are really good um, are just like a little bit more than I want to spend right now. They're closer to like three to four hundred, and that's just like more than I want to have in a lighter. Um, but Dunhill is a hundred percent on my list. Oh, and uh, the patches. I'm not like super into that. It's just kind of like happened. So this is. Um, I'll get into all the steel flame crap in a bit, but like I've been really into the uh, steel flame koi. So this is the ghost koi. It's all white, which is cool. Um, it's just a Velcro patch. You can see I have the Koi sticker as well, the Koi ring spin, uh, the Koi and Bushido tag, um, the Koi and Dragon uh, patch to match this uh, slug, and then I have the Dragon Molly clip. So I kind of have like that theme going. Um, this one I got when I purchased a Steel Flame spinner. Uh, I think it was the poker one. Um, a lot of these, all the, well, all these steel flame spinners come with these like black pouches. Uh, and so I have like a few of these now. Uh, and I like that there's Velcro on the front because you can actually use the patches. So I don't think patches would be something I was into, uh, except for the fact that I can technically use them because I do carry these pouches. I actually put them on my belt. I'm a total fucking nerd about it. Um, you know, I should get a pocket protector while I'm at it, but like I literally belt this on the outside of my belt and like walk around with my spinner um because i mean they're expensive and my pockets are full already so uh, i do like being able to uh, accessorize a little bit with the matching patches which is cool other than that i don't really have much in the way of patches um yeah jubilant i i'm gonna keep on rocking yo blade show is in two weeks two weeks and I'm going to be rocking it out there. I'm really excited. Um, really excited to get tons of footage for you guys. I'm not going to buy anything. I mean, I'm not saying I won't buy anything when I'm there. But I'm like, I'm not going 
to the show for the purpose of buying. I'm going because I want to get good footage and hang out with good people. Um, and so I'm really hoping to like put more of a focus on that this year and produce better content. That is the goal. Uh, what's up, Joseph? Looking forward to meet you, man. Hey, uh, so for anybody wondering, I guess this is probably the last time I'm going to talk to you directly uh, before the show. I will have a collared black shirt with the Tovar Schwartz logo on the chest. So if you see me walking around, poke me, wave at me, say something. Uh, don't be afraid. I am super stoked to meet people. I met a ton of people at the last two shows I've been at. Uh, and that's why I'm wearing this shirt, right? I, I wouldn't advertise myself if I didn't want you to say hi. So uh, I'll have that on. And then I think my man Josh, who unfortunately couldn't make it to this live stream, uh, made some knife cast shirts with our like respective logos uh, for Frank and I. So maybe one day I'll have that on and another day I'll have my shirt on. But it should be dope. It should be dope. What is up, Nico? Good to see you, man. Uh, that lore, though. So, uh, I think Ocean's probably the only one in here that knows what this is. What is this crap on there? Um, <laughs> it took me a few weeks and some haggling. But uh, I managed to get my hands on this first edition stainless steel pocket lore nautical. That is a mouthful. So, uh, this is a spinner. You can see the buttons are like actually really large coins. They have these super, super intricate, really like high detail engravings on them. They're super sick. Uh, I almost ended up with a brass version. I'm really glad that deal fell through because I much prefer the stainless steel. And this is first edition, which is pretty dope. You can see like the stream quality is like not even high enough to like pick up the detail on this side. Uh, I'm looking into like macro lenses or something to be able to cor like correctly photograph this for Instagram cuz like I want I want you guys to see like I mean like my human eye can't really process every single individual line that's in the uh, engraving. So it's pretty sweet. Uh, and then you've got this outer rim here which has like the same kind of finish as like a quarter, just a lot thicker. That spins spins very well uh, but it's more than that you can actually crack it open and uh, remove the coin buttons as you can most spinners and you can see on the inside they've got the pocket lore logo typing and on this one these are ones uh, for the first edition I don't know what is on this side on the non first editions uh, but then it's, of course, a ring spin as well, just like the steel flame ring spins. And beyond that, because the fun never ends, am I right? They are actually compatible. So you can pop a steel flame slug, no play, perfect fit, and uh, there you go. So uh, the fact that I knew that there was that level of compatibility with the spinners that I already had in my collection, knowing how much I like ring spins, uh, and really wanting something that is small and circular, uh, this was perfect for me because it's got sort of the eccentricities uh, that make it something special in my collection. Um, but mechanically speaking, it also fits sort of what I have going uh, in this department. So... I was really happy to be able to pick that up. Uh, the reason it was so difficult to get is because they're incredibly rare. Um, I think they've made less than 50 ever. Um, it might be right around that number. It might be significantly less than that number. Uh, I don't. I haven't been able to find their run numbers, but like they've only done the first edition run, which was 10. This is one of 10, uh, which God is crazy to think about. Uh, this is one of 10, and then the recent run that they did, they did. Uh, stainless steel ones and then brass ones um and i think they i mean they've only done the one run so can't i mean how many could it be 50 um so i'm like super stoked about this this is a super recent pickup uh i scored it from a guy in norway on facebook um uh see ya blade joseph yeah man take care uh, Christopher, awesome. I heard you mention these in the podcast. Yeah, the, the lore I did mention uh, in the podcast. I really had a hard time describing it on the spot. I, like, didn't go into the cast uh, expecting to speak on it. So, 
when I got to the point of describing it, I kind of fell apart. Um, so, I mean, I guess I spoke about that spinner. I will talk about the, uh, the Rotoblade real quick here. So, this one is sort of like the, uh, oh, streams fluttering. Everybody good? Okay, there we go. Um, so, this one is sort of like the, how would I describe it? The mechanical gem of the spinners that I have. Uh, so, you can see I did stretch for the Damasteel buttons which do have an imperfection on them, which I'm not super happy about. But they are fucking dope. Uh, this is the Tumbled Titanium Tri-Stubby from Rotoblade. Uh, Tri-Stubby because those are always the, the, the more arms um, or the more circular a spinner gets, the better it is. Um, the bar ones just wobble too much. Uh, so that's why I went for the try, and then with the titanium, you can get a machine finish uh, or this tumbled finish. I wanted the tumbled because uh, I really wanted this to be like a, a spinner spinner uh, insofar as not something that I was particular. Like, this can hit the ground, uh, and I'm not going to freak out about it the way I would uh, kind of panic if I dropped my steel flame or my lore. Uh, and then, like I said, mechanically speaking... It's probably the most spectacular. Uh, it just spins the best. It has incredible balance. The weight in terms of... The weight compared to how much solid titanium is used is pretty spectacular. It's very light. Uh, and it just... I mean, you've got total control over it. I'm, like, rotating my hand on multiple axes right now. Uh, and it's perfect. And this actually has a cool little stand that I bought because I'm a sucker. It's literally... It just looks like one of those... Um, uh, I don't remember the metal that they used. I don't think it was steel. But uh, the the weights that are used as, like, the actual measurements of, like, the kilogram um, and stuff, it looks kind of like that. Uh, and it's got a super heavy base, and this part fits the cap. It is a little bit of a loose fit. I wish they had kind of worked on that uh, fit a little bit more. But it sits on the base, and then you can spin it and sort of, like, leave it on your desk. Uh, and so when I keep it over in like my little EDC corner, that's where I keep it because it takes up less space. Um, you can kind of tuck stuff under it and then still spin it, which is cool, uh, especially when space is tight. Definitely uh, going to need interaction from y'all, a little bit of curiosity to help me along. I certainly don't want to just sit here and blabber on. Um, about doodads without any interest. Uh, I'll, I also have this um, leather case that comes with the pocket lore. And so uh, that's a nice little touch as well. They really uh, went the whole nine yards with this one. The packaging is even worth seeing. Let me... Um, they hook you up with this, like, one of those uh, boxes that can, like, fall apart. Like, you can build it. Super, like, nice wood, very light. They've got this awesome, like, laser engraving right on the wood, which, I mean, shit, that's not cheap. That's a pretty developed logo. Uh, and then the box quietly and comfortably slides open, revealing your thick cardstock COA. So you can see we have the nautical in stainless steel with an antique finish. This is number six ever. Uh, and it was made in January. And then they've got some nice little packing material, you know, some little paper and rope. And then, you know, the pocket lore is uh, sitting in there like that. So really nice sort of like barnyard approach. I don't know. I really, uh, I always appreciate good packaging. I really do. It bums me out when people get really nice packaging like this and they throw it away. It's like, what are you doing? This, this is clearly part of the product. Show me them flashlights. I can do that. So this one, I bought a long time ago because if you don't know, or you don't recognize off the bat, um, for those of you familiar with Reich Knife, Reich Knife, um, they make a knife called the Thor, in particular the Thor 2, I think they're up to the Thor 6 now. The Thor 2, they came out with some special edition models 
that had this exact patterning and type of anodizing and coloration and everything. Uh, and they made, I think, three or four different color palettes. And then Jet, uh, what is this company? Jet Stream? Jet? Jet? Jet ST? Is that the company? I don't really know too much about it. Um, this was their, like, 12-year or 10-year anniversary, 12-year anniversary. Um, and so they did these special editions. Now, it's hard to say if they did it in combination with Ragnife or if they if they and Ragnife used, like, the same designer slash engraver or whatever um, in China. Like, that's possible. It could just be, like, sort of the same idea. But I don't know. It's it's the exact same pattern and everything. So it's, it's identical. Um, but... Anyway, the whole point of the story is I bought this with the intention of owning the Thor 2 that matches, um, and that just really never came about, and now I don't have an interest in it anymore. So I actually listed this flashlight for sale over on Reddit. Uh, so if you want it, hit me up. It is in perfect condition. It comes with an alarmingly large, like unnecessarily large fake now pack thing, whatever. Uh, so yeah, let me know. The flashlight I actually use and adore is my Olight S1A baton. This is in stainless steel despite the color. Uh, this is a limited edition and I picked this up on the floor at Blade Show 2017. Uh, I didn't have a light. I kind of knew that, you know, something I wanted to be on the lookout at Blade. I didn't really know what I was interested in. I don't, like, care enough to get, like, a good light or whatever. Um, but I felt this one. I picked it up. I felt that it was really heavy. I like that it's magnetized on the back, so I can actually stick it uh, to... Uh, you're not on camera, but... Um, I have, like, a metal thing, shelf thing that my monitor sits on, and, like, this sticks to it, so it's, like, completely out of the way. It's, like, hanging, um, which I really appreciate. It's got three different modes... Or three different brightnesses, I suppose, is the way you would phrase it. There's no, like, strobe mode or anything. Uh, so you can see cycling through that. Uh, and it's just a great little light. I love the way it feels. I love the sort of machined texturing that they've done here. I love the colors. I took some pretty sweet pictures of this light. Um, gosh, it must have been a while ago. Probably six months ago. Uh, and those should be up on Instagram somewhere. Or Reddit. Um, but this light looks great. It's got this shiny polished blue ring around the button, again around the uh, light itself. Big, big, big fan. Uh, thank you. It does have a nice color on it. <clears throat> yeah, Reich, uh, Reich is... What, there's a video somewhere on my YouTube channel, I think, uh, wherein at New York Custom Knife Show, the, like lead guy like drop of reich like dropped a reich knife on another reich knife and each were like six thousand dollars or something um they just they just don't seem to know what the fuck they're doing we like asked them where the weird damascus they got from was from and they said like new jersey but we're like we're in new jersey and you you make these knives in china so like you came to new jersey and you got the damascus and then you took it back to china and then you came back from new york custom knife show like it could i could be true but it just sounded bizarre. They just seem bizarre to me. Um, they don't seem to care. <laughs> I think I think the guy must just be doing it for fun. Um, Ocean asks, how have I not mentioned the Evo yet? I don't know, man. Like I said, I need y'all to show interest. I don't know who gives a shit about what. The uh, This is the Billet Spin Evolution. This is their newest model, right? Uh, this is a stemless design, so it's a little bit weird. Um, at first, but you can see it is a top. And uh, Ocean here has the piece of shit, super lame, mega uncool, <laughs> stainless steel version. <laughs> I deserve that. <laughs> oh, I deserve that. But this version is a uh, full zirconium uh, construction, or zirconium body anyway, 
Uh, you can see the sweet texturing they've done or, or designing, milling, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then in here, the internals is a, uh, I think they call it Spiral Damascus. I think it's from Vegas Forge, but I, I could be wrong on that. Don't quote me on that. I'm actually probably wrong on that. Uh, and you can see it's a spinner inside a top. So it's fucking dope. Uh, and I don't want to do this again because I was planning on doing this on camera, but I'm not going to uh, because a technician that I work with today told me that if I exceed the RPM limit on the bearing inside that it will literally explode. <laughs> so, so I'm not going to do it again, but there is a video that you can go watch on my Instagram uh, wherein I took this thing, a DataVac duster, uh, which is like a industrial uh, motorized can of dust off, which is the, probably the greatest $75 I've ever spent in my entire life. Uh, I use this thing for absolutely everything. I use it to clean my grinder. Uh, I use it to clean my computer, keyboard. Anytime you like drop something into something else or get something wet, psh, blow it off. Um, anytime I do like maintenance on a knife, uh, like I was like, uh, if I'm like washing a knife, use this, psh, blow off the water. Um, what else do I use it for? Uh, well, spinning up spinners. <laughs> but anyway, this if you buy if you use dust off if you buy cans of compressed air, spend the seventy dollars. Never buy another damn thing the rest of your life. I mean, they're like eight or nine dollars a pop for a thing of dust. So that's seven cans. You've all bought more than seven cans of dust off. Buy one of these. It's on Amazon. Just search data back. Uh, anyway, sorry. I'm, I'm like doing sales now for dusters. Uh, <laughs> there's a video on my Instagram of me firing this thing up to probably 100,000 RPM. Uh, and then you just sit it on the spin base and the rotation of the bearings pulls hard enough uh, on the structure of the, the top that it actually makes the top stand still and spin even though you put it down and it was completely still. So that's a super, super duper, super amazing super duper fun thing to do but i can't do it anymore or it's gonna explode um but yeah i love the evo i love just sitting and like kind of for lack of a better term st stroking it um it's a lot of fun so ocean wants to know what the bit driver is so obviously this is not like edc <clears throat> but i thought it was good to have here to mention to you guys I'm going to start taking stuff I've already spoken about and moving it to the side, and then we can come back to it if it gets asked about. But I'm just going to clear some space for myself. Um, okay. <clears throat> so this is made by a company called Scout... I don't... Troy, this is literally called my, my EDC collection live stream. I just did my knife collection live stream. You want a knife? There's a knife. Uh, it's, a, it's a fair ask. Um, this is a Scout Leather Co. bit driver. It is zirconium construction, solid zerk. There's a theme here, right? I'm, I love zerk. Uh, a little bit of knurling here for texture, for grip. Everything else is polished. Skateboard bearing. Seems to have actually rusted over since I... Well... The good news is you could always pop this off, uh, and it doesn't need to spin well because it's just for doing this. Um, I guess I left some sweat on there, and bearing rusted a little bit. That's fine. Uh, and then if you buy this, he will sell you a set of Wea bits, which uh, can never have enough Wea bits. And then if you buy the Wea bits, he'll sell you this base. Now, I stretched for the base, and it was totally worth it. It's it's 80 bucks for the base. The base is as much as the bit driver. I think the bit driver is like 100. Um, so the Wea bits and the base are more than the bit driver, unless you get a cheaper uh, like brass one. Um, it's T5 through T20. Uh, I think it skips... Yeah, so T5 through T9, and then 10, 15, and 20. Um, and then, you know, some, some regular driver bits. But <clears throat> this is an aluminum base. It's solid aluminum construction. 
But there's a there's a secret to all of this, which makes this like really worthwhile. All the units are magnetized. So if we have a driver, it's got the magnet that you can see in there. That's pretty standard. So I've got my magnetized bits. Great. Most drivers do that. Each individual slot on the base is magnetized. So I've got all my bits and they don't go anywhere. If you can hear my dogs barking, I apologize. But uh, all the bits are magnetized and then the base itself is magnetized as well. So the driver, just <laughs> you never wanna be too sure when you've got a, a one of a kind Thorburn under here, but um, everything's magnetized and then the base itself is magnetized, so if you have like a, a, a big toolbox with like a fold up, you know, oh, sorry, with like a fold up metal uh, top, this will stick to that. I actually sometimes stick it to the uh, thing I mentioned earlier, and it's like, I wish I could show you. I really don't want to fuck with the setup. Um, but, you know, it's it's sitting horizontal right now, and I could just pull stuff out and stick it in. So uh, this thing's super sweet. I recommend everybody goes and buys one of these because to get a lot of these, um, like, interesting bit drivers, Zirconium or, or Mokutai or whatever, you, what have you, a lot of the guys that do it are way expensive. Um, and I've never seen any come with the base. So a lot of times you buy this beautiful driver. It's $400. It's made of Timascus and all this cool stuff. And then it just has to like sit on your desk. That's not great. So um, the combination of the base and everything on this with the bits, uh, 200 bucks or whatever is super worth it. So I mentioned the uh, Apple Watch earlier. Somebody asked about the strap. I'll give you a closer look to at the buckle here. That is the star of the show. Uh, we do have a Timascus tongue. This is by SN Metalwork on Instagram. See the shaping to it. Beautifully finished, soft on all the edges. Uh, and then the clasp itself is black carbocords. Not the best lighting for carbocords. It looks amazing when you're outside. Love that. Uh, and then, as I mentioned before, I did get the Steel Flame Molly Clip to throw on there. <clears throat> I got it direct from them. It was pretty cheap, so I figured it was worth it. Which I guess should lead me to sort of like talking about uh, this Steel Flame kick here. So, I don't know. I'll talk about these in a second. But uh, I'm like really into this Koi and the Koi Dragon aesthetic. So you can see here, I've got the blue Koi sticker. And this is a pretty rudimentary collection. I'm sure I'll get more. Uh, the Koi patch. This is the Koi Bushido copper tag. Uh, then we have the, let's see, Dragon Koi slug on the Koi ring spin uh, and then we have the patch to match that as well the dragon koi uh, and then I got the dragon molly clip so um, still pretty early in in that aesthetic uh, there's a lot of um, thanks man I appreciate it yeah I um, I don't know man I fell in love with the koi design and the thing is like steel flames super culty uh, if anybody's not familiar, they do like their jewelry company. Um, the spinners are sort of like an offshoot of what they do and they become very popular and they go for a lot of money. Um, but I mean, really these guys like to make bracelets and necklaces and pendants and earrings and, you know, all kinds of different stuff. And they consider their spinners jewelry as well. Uh, and so they've developed this sort of cult like following and they have sort of different theme sets. Uh, and designs and some are more rare than others and some are more popular than others um, the one I wanted most was definitely the koi I just really fell in love with the koi aesthetic I have a big appreciation for Japanese culture um, and among a lot of the options uh, for the different aesthetics with steel flame <clears throat> the koi dragon 
is sort of like mid-level in terms of desirability. Um, so it's slightly easier to get this stuff than some of like the, the crazy rare ones, but it is harder to get. They are more desirable than um, some of the stuff like the Rose, for example, is not very popular. But uh, I want to continue with that. There's there's like some tags that I've passed up on because the price is like way too much. Um, I, I've tried to get tons more of these Koi patches and every time I see one that I want, uh, it's already sold out. There's a Koi Niobium Molly Clip that they recently came out with and there's I think only three in the world so far. Maybe they've got more. Um, and if anybody knows where to find one of those, I will, I really want that. So let me know. Um, I, I would really appreciate that. But yeah, I want to keep building on this aesthetic, and I think I'm going to add the Bushido in there. The Bushido stuff is really unpopular and really easy to pick up and pretty cheap, so um, I have an appreciation for that. I wish I still had my mini Bushido so that I could pair it with it, um, but I'll get a Colazzo Knives Bushido full size at some point. Uh, and then to have all the Steel Flame Bushido stuff to go with that is going to be fucking dope. Um, so you got, you can see here, I really like themes. Um, I really like putting all that together. Hey, Troy, thanks so much for, um, stopping by, man. Uh, take care and I hope you have a great night. Uh, do I carry Hanks? Uh, you use them a lot? No, I don't carry them. It's funny. I own a bunch. I don't know if you can see, but behind me, there's a stack right there under that DSLR camera that's sitting there, uh, of like probably 10 or 15 but no i don't carry them i bought them specifically for instagram photos um i just don't have enough room in my pockets and then like there is one that i started using and it's like now it's covered in oil stains and stuff so like i mean i use it as a rag essentially now um but it, i don't know and i yeah you could wash it i guess but then the colors wash out i don't know i i, I haven't i haven't started carrying those um but i i definitely own them uh, Ryan, these are not, <clears throat> these are not Cartier's, no, I went over these briefly earlier, uh, this is, uh, made in Japan, and I got this on Urban EDC Supply, I don't actually know the name, um, it's like a, it's like a Zippo, it's a wick lighter, uh, this entrance is for the fuel, this entrance gets you into the flint, um, and then you can see there is a lid here, boop, and when you strike, it's all one motion, and you close it out. Uh, this is like new age and not super cool. This is a Colibri, a uh, Japanese lighter as well, that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, does not function because the regulator is broken. So you can fill it, but it's like a four-inch flame. Uh, and then this is like a 80s ST DuPont, which is low on fuel, but does function. Uh, and this is easily my favorite. This is the one that I use. Um, Side strike, I love it. I love the way it sounds. Um, it's got this little Pegasus emblem here from like a personalization, which I just think looks cool. And this one is uh, true silver plated. This is not fake. Um, so I mean, the whole thing's not made of silver, but it is. It is true silver plating. So I like this one a lot. Uh, and then right now I'm on the hunt for a Dunhill, but I just what I'm looking for and how much somebody wants for it haven't quite added up yet, um, but I'm definitely on the hunt. I'm on eBay probably every other day uh, searching for new Dunhill listings. Uh, so let's see, guys. What else are you interested in? The only things I haven't really talked about are the tops um, and then a couple other knickknacks, and then they've been off screen this whole time, but <gasps> pens. I've got some sick pens that we're going to go over as well. This, by the way, I didn't mention earlier. This is my Rotoblade pouch. Beautiful, super thick. The leather smells amazing. It's so good. I put this lanyard on here. Uh, this is a Noble Knives lanyard with a uh, Warhammer bead. I'll probably replace this lanyard with something a little special, a side project that I've been working on. Um, not going to go into too much detail about that. But So this is probably a temporary placeholder. But I love carrying the Rotoblade around in this. Just stuff it right in there. I don't know what it's stuck on right now. There we go. And uh, I love putting this in the pocket with my uh, phone, actually, because it's um, really soft. Let's talk about these tops real quick. Oh, and then I guess sort of like the steel flame aesthetic in general, right? It's just like a dumb little cult to be. But you can see I've got... 
I have stuff of Steel Flame that I would never have of like any other brand, right? So like, I've got all these different spinners, um, and then I've got like patches, and then this, and like the sticker, and so, whatever. I'm a I'm a little, I'm falling for their spell. I have to admit. Uh, and then let's see. I'll mention this as well. This I got also from Urban EDC Supply. This is the one. What's the company's name? One Design or something like that. The it's um the interior, the three dimensional part of this maze is milled out of a solid chunk of titanium and anodized a beautiful electric green. There are steel and ceramic bearing balls inside. Uh, and then it is actually a spin coin. So you can see we have a little uh, sort of ball or button on the end here in red. Uh, and then a pretty cool design, all milled out of titanium and anodized and finished. Uh, and then I stretched for the sapphire glass. So you can get an acrylic one, um, but this is the full-on sapphire glass. And yes, you can get all these balls in the middle at once. I have done it, and I have proved it on Instagram. So go check that out. Uh, is that like a very small top, the gold one? You nailed it. Oop, that was a bad spin. So this top I got from African Custom Knives. They have quite a few. Uh, they sent this as a little treat for me in a knife package that I purchased. Um, they usually have these with them at shows. There's a guy named... Oh, there's a guy named, fuck, what's his name? I'm sorry, I don't remember. I I think his name is Tyler. Uh, there, his name starts with a T, the guy that makes these, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but African Custom Knives usually has these with them. Uh, it's not spinning very well because this uh, pad that's here is not, it's kind of like warped like this. Um, yeah, this is like really bad. Uh, it, it spins better than that, I assure you. Uh, but yeah, so this was like a nice free little uh, trinket that I really appreciate. Yeah, Urban EDC Supply does have cool stuff. When you buy something from them, they're very, very blatant about like, we care about customer service, we care about you, we care about collectors. And saying that means a lot to me. But you have to prove it, right? Um and they have. They've proven it. So I sort of thought they were, like, too big for their britches, right? Like, too big of a company uh, to, like, correctly or properly serve a community that they say – like, the kind of community that they say that they serve. You know, because to me, their uh, Instagram stories and stuff always seemed very, like, professional and, like, whatever. And, you know, it didn't seem um, like a person with, like, too much, I don't know, passion or whatever – they just seem like to be taking advantage of the EDC market, but that's not the case. Um, I, I've interacted with them. As soon as I bought a product from them, I got a sweet email, um, and uh, you know they reposted my thing on Instagram and everything. Lots of interaction, talked to me on DMs. So they're actually super cool. I really support them, and uh, I search their store a lot more often now. Uh, yeah, so Ocean mentioned spin bases. The problem is this guy doesn't work in the spin base because this one that I have here is too concave. I mean, I guess it did work there. But usually this one's pretty hard to get started. It's a uh, I need to get a one, I need to get a smaller one like a 75 millimeter that's less concave. This one's really big. Um, but continuing to talk about tops, this is the first top I ever got. This is a Marfione top. Uh, it's solid stainless steel construction with a uh, removable titanium stem. Uh, it's really hard to spin because it's super heavy. Uh, it's really hard to spin well anyway to get it to stand still. But I've had it for like over a year. And it's funny because when I bought it, um, I was like, oh, okay, I don't like tops. Um, and that was sort of it for a long time. And it wasn't until probably a month ago that I was kind of like, I'm going to check this out again. And I actually like them a lot more because I realized this one just kind of sucks. <laughs> uh, but it's a part of my collection. It's serial number nine. So like it's one of their originals. 
from the first run, so I keep it. This is sort of my new Pride and Glory. Uh, I just got this in the mail yesterday with some Vegemite. Because I purchased it from an Australian lad uh, who was uh, kind enough to send this along. I haven't tried it yet. I should probably try it. I hear it's terrible. Um, but I bought this Billet Spin Matrix in stainless steel with a Mokutai uh, internal base. And I actually watched a video on this yesterday that really made me appreciate it. So I want to kind of go over some details on this one because... So, it's pretty crazy. This is a nine-piece construction top. I'm just going to kind of... So, each of these little dowel pins is its own individual unit. The Mokutai internal, uh, like, platform or whatever uh, is its own piece. The stem is actually one piece all the way through. Uh, and then each of these stainless steel sides is a piece so five dowels uh six seven eight and then nine on the mokutai <clears throat> uh but there's more detail than that so you can see this star here on the top they hand match the star to the five spokes you see that so they actually make sure that it's assembled that way uh, and then you can see deep in there to the ridged Mokutai interior. You can see the five spokes and then the five little spikes. Everything is fully chamfered. You can see on each spoke there is a divot, like an accent divot. Uh, if we take a look at the... What do you call it? Handle, I guess. Stem. There it is. Uh, we have some knurling. And then sort of down on the stem part itself is like barbing. I'm trying to show you guys. It's hard. Now, on the sides of these pieces, you can see that there are these divots as well. What you'll notice is that the divots match up at a 45 degree angle, or sort of in a diagonal sense, right? So these divots match up, these divots match up. See what I'm talking about? Now, more than that, the dowels are all in the middle of matched uh, divots. So just an absolutely stunning amount of detail. And because all the weight is in that Mokutai base, of course I'm going to fuck it up on camera, this thing spins like an absolute fucking master. I love it. It's silent. It looks so cool because you can see inside it. So it's very three-dimensional. Uh, it spins very well. It spins for a long time. Uh, and I absolutely love it. It's easily my favorite top. It's totally sucked me into billet spin. Um, as much as I like my Evo because I'm sort of a spinner guy first, uh, this thing has made me a total top dude. And now I'm like hooked. So look out for more tops in the future. All right, and then let's get all this stuff out of the way and close out with some pens, shall we? Silly doggos barking like maniacs. Uh, so this is my pen holder. You can see it's got some of that like electro whatever finishing on the wood. And uh, let's go over these pens. This first one's interesting. Uh, I love handing this to people and they're like, what is that? Uh, and I'm like, it's a pen. And then they're like, hmm. They try to like click it and do whatever. Uh, so you can see it's a uh, solid titanium. It's a solid titanium rod. There is a laser engraved pattern, which is kind of like a positive to neutral pattern, which is super cool. And hidden in that pattern 
Ooh, is a cap. It's sort of like one of those marker pens. The cap has an O-ring, which I really appreciate. So the close is super soft. It kind of easily and slowly, cleanly glides on. And then you just twist and twist until the pattern matches up. You're good to go. I love this thing. It's made by a company called Blank Forces. They just succeeded on Kickstarter. This is from their first run. It's a great piece. These are both Matthew Martin pens. Uh, Matthew Martin is RJ Martin's son. MCM pens if you want to look them up this is a solid zirconium construction this is excuse me titanium with carbon fiber they both have glass breakers on the tips uh, and as you can probably tell just by a first glance this is a much older generation than well much older this is a generation behind this one you can see the cap here or sorry the clip is you know, simply screwed, whereas on this one, he's sort of, like, done some MCM pen stuff, and it's kind of, like, stuck in between, and just machined better. Uh, and these are both cap pens. Just ballpoints. Uh, easily some of my favorite pieces. I really love the Zerk piece. And I really look forward to collecting more of Matthew's pens. Uh, he's high, 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 high on my list. Uh, this next pen is... I got it from Afrin Custom Knives. It's made by the guy as sort of like a... <clears throat> it's made as sort of like a side project by the guy who supplies South Africans with Mammoth Molar. <clears throat> so, um... It's just a kit pen, uh, but the Mammoth Molar was fashioned by him. Uh, I really like that it's magnetized on both sides. Standard ballpoint. I really wanted some Mammoth in my collection. Uh, this is a very recent acquisition. This is made by a guy who goes by the company name um, High Caliber Customs. Uh, again, it's another kit pen. The clip and the top and bottom are kit pieces with the knurling. Uh, this is sort of a gunmetal color. He also does uh, offers like a brass version. Uh, but what he does is the centerpiece, which is awesome, uh, knurled copper. And then he uh, PVD, I, I don't know if it's a PVD coating, um, but he uh, does some sort of uh, black coating. And then he just kind of like scratches it off uh, so you can see the copper coming through. And uh, I'm a super huge sucker for knurling, so when I saw this piece, it absolutely had to join my collection. And then we get to the fell holters. I've had a few fell holters. Some have come and gone. This is actually the mechanical pencil, which is super cool, something a little bit unique that uh, most people don't have. And I'm currently in the middle of like deciding if I want to throw a Timascus clip on this start modifying it or <clears throat> let it go and use the money towards a different Fellholter pen. Uh, I haven't figured that one out yet. So this is kind of like on the, the list of like, what do we do with this? But my pride and joy, a fully modified, gorgeous, custom Fellholter Tiny Bolt. I picked this thing up. Where did I buy this pen? I must have, I must have bought it new. I think I bought this at New York Custom Knife Show. I don't know where else I would have gotten it. Huh. That doesn't seem right. But I got it on Knife Center. I got it on Knife Center right after New York Custom Knife Show. That's what it was. This piece was at New York Custom Knife Show. Knife Center bought it along with a bunch of other pens. Two weeks after the show, they got listed online, and I got suckered into paying dealer prices. So uh, this is you know just a standard tiny bolt when I got it. <clears throat> what I've added here is a stainless steel Tata Tools cap spin. It is a spinner. Uh, you can see here the beautiful um, pattern that the Fellholter guys have done is sort of has some diamonds here. So I got the diamond pattern K 
cap spin to match. Uh, what we have here is a zirconium tip. And to match that, I recently, the most recent modification is this zirconium bolt handle, uh, which is made by Titanium on Instagram, otherwise known as Jerhas. Uh, beautiful work. I absolutely love that. Uh, and then this is a awesome Adam Purvis custom <clears throat> Timascus clip. This was the first Tiny Bolt clip, uh, sorry, the second Tiny Bolt clip uh, that he ever made. Uh, and this is easily my favorite. I mean, it's just, there's so much money in this pen. Um, sweet piece. All right, guys. Well, we've covered pretty much everything on here except for this Blade Show coin, or sorry, this Blade HQ coin that I got at Blade Show last year. It's one of those addict coins. Um, it's just something that I keep around. I think it's kind of cutesy. But um, do you guys have any other questions? Is there anything else that you want to know about the EDC gear? There were a lot of call-outs uh, for people wanting to see this stuff. I really wanted to show off like the watch particularly and um, some of the pens. So uh, I'm, I'm really glad that I finally got around to doing this. I uh, picked up those tops and stuff recently, which sort of brought everything over the edge in terms of awesome sauce-ness. Uh, I will, again, be at Blade Show uh, in a couple of weeks. If you see me wearing a black t-shirt with my logo on it, please come say hello. That's why I'm wearing the shirt. Uh, and I think the thing that I really want to pick up while I'm there is a zirconium tie bolt. Um, I know everybody's like gasp, not a knife. Um, I just don't really have, uh, I, I'm just, I'm working on some other projects right now on the side. And so I don't have a ton of money to be investing into the hobby right now. Knives are really expensive and I'm feeling pretty comfortable where my collection is right now. So, um, <clears throat> it's sort of easier to go into blade show with the mindset of just like, I'm not going to buy anything. I'm not going to be worried about it. And when I walk up to tables, my goal is going to be filming the table and talking to the maker, um, rather than, you know, should I buy this with all that pressure? Uh, but I am going with a couple of spare bucks, and uh, I think a zirconium, a zirconium tie bolt is really on the list. That would sort of round out uh, the pens, <clears throat> and then let me move up into more expensive MCM pens. But I think the uh, the zirk tie bolt is a must. Well, I haven't heard from anybody as I've been rambling on. So thanks so much for tuning in, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, again, I look forward to meeting everybody at Blade Show. Go check out awesome pictures of all this crap on Instagram. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, look forward to maybe one more video before Blade. Um, I might postpone it, honestly. I might just skip it, but I, I, I don't know. We'll see. I'm pretty busy this weekend. We'll see if I get a video out. If I do... A little sneak peek it's going to be on this super sick thorburn l42 with marshall bolsters um this is definitely the next one up on the block in terms of what needs to get filmed um so if i manage to do it it's going to be this otherwise this will be the first video um that pops up after blade show um yeah christopher thanks so much for stopping by man i really appreciate it thanks again to everybody else for all the support uh again if you guys have any questions if you ever want to talk to me uh, if you ever want to give any feedback for the podcast or for me or for the channel or whatever uh feel free to email me at tovarshworks at gmail.com thanks again guys i'm gonna go ahead and click the uh stop streaming button and that should time out in just a moment take care